Hey, you guys. So I hope that you have gone over the chart that I put on today's lesson instructions. Uh, it talks about the text structures because that's going to be part of what you guys are comparing uh, after we get done reading today's reading. So yesterday we read Francis Perkins and the Triangle Fire. Today we're reading from the story of the Triangle Factory Fire by a different author. This is History Writing by Zachary Kent. A little background about Zachary Kent, he's the author of more than 50 books for young readers. He writes primarily about history. A historical event such as the Triangle Factory Fire can be so dramatic and so haunting that it compels generations that follow to dissect its details and trace its impact. In Kent's account, he recounts what happens and examines the fire's long-term effects. Prepare to compare. As you read, pay attention to the way in which the author presents information about this deadly fire, especially how he structures or organizes facts and other details. Consider what you learn about the aftermath of the fire and why the author includes this information. So here we go. In the days following the fire, city officials sifted through the charred rubble at the Ash Building and tried to fix the fault for the tragedy. Fire Chief Crocker angrily stated, there wasn't a fire escape anywhere fronting on the street by which these unfortunate girls could escape. Doors that opened inward instead of outward, overcrowding in work areas, and blocked exits were also to blame. Fire Marshal William Beers stunned New Yorkers by soon declaring, I can show you 150 loft buildings far worse than this one. Lillian D. Wald of the Joint Board of Sanitary Control also reported on the general situation. The conditions as they exist now are hideous. Our investigators have shown that there are hundreds of buildings which invite disaster just as much as did the ash structure. Accused of ignoring their employees' safety, Triangle owners Blanc and Harris were charged with manslaughter. During the three-week trial, angry citizens packed the courtroom. Outside, in the corridors, women screamed, murderers, murderers, make them suffer for killing our children. Lawyers argued that Blanc and Harris kept all of the triangle doors locked during the workday, therefore causing many of the deaths. Weighing in evidence, however, the jury returned a verdict of not guilty. I cannot see that anyone was responsible for the disaster, explained juror H. Houston Hearst. It seems to me to have been an act of the Almighty. The New York Call viewed the matter differently. Capital can commit no crime, it angrily declared, when it is in the pursuit of profits. Furious New Yorkers refused to let the issue rest. In October 1911, the city established the Bureau of Fire Prevention to inspect safety standards in other buildings. Five months earlier, the New York State Legislature created a special factory investigating commission. Through the next four years, commission investigators crawled and pried through the rooms and cellars of factories and tenant, tenant, tenement houses excuse me, all across the state. They examined workers as filthy living conditions and witnessed the dangers of crippling machinery and long work hours in dusty, dirty fire traps. As a result of the commission's shocking findings, New York State quickly passed 33 new labor laws by 1914. These laws formed the foundation of New York State's Industrial Code, the finest in the nation. Soon, other states followed New York's example and enacted protective labor laws. One factory commission investigator had witnessed the fateful Triangle Fire. Francis Perkins said, We heard the fire engines and rushed to see what was going on. We got there just as they started to jump. I shall never forget the frozen horror that came over us of, as we stood with our hands on our throats watching that horrible sight, knowing that there was no help. In 1933, Frank, President Franklin Roosevelt named Frances Perkins Secretary of Labor. She and other social reformers dedicated their lives to ensuring worker safety throughout the country. They did not die in vain, and we will never forget them, vowed Perkins. From the ashes of the tragic Triangle Factory fire, came help for millions of United States laborers today.